Hello and welcome, I'm the Restless Kaiser and we are modelling for Advantage. Well, in fact today we're painting again in our tabletop ready painting range, so the objective of this video is to get some of our British vehicle desert tanks and such onto the table as quickly as possible whilst the models still look fairly respectable. We're going to do that using some Crusaders, as I've already shown you, and some Grant tanks. From time to time you may see me sort of looking over this way. I've got the laptop here which has got the stills on us helping me keep the painting process in a sensible order. So the first thing you need to do is you need to take the sprue and you need to build the model. Uh, I've only got a few basic suggestions there. This is the Crusader. I find that if you build the hull separately from the turret, the whole parts glue together, they're dry, and then you can attach any optional bits without too much moving around. Do the same with the turret. Um, so with the Crusader, for example, I added the skirts after the main hull section had dried. I just thought it stopped you. I needed to apply a little bit of pressure to get it in the right place and line up perfectly. It stopped everything else from moving around while the plastic glue was wet. So there's my completed Crusader, made several different versions of this out of this kit, but then we need to go away and prime it. I primed mine with uh, GW Zandri Dust, but any basic dark sandy color is gonna work. I wanted to start with a darker color so I could add the lighter colors in layers without having to mess around too much. You can see for comparison here, this is the first base coat applied. I'm using Vallejo's Dark Sand. The one on the right is just the base coat of uh, GW Zandri Dust that I used. The one on the left is with the Dark Sand applied. Once you've got two or three coats of that dark sand on, it really depends how thickly you apply it, but I would recommend two or three thin coats, to be honest. Then we start applying some of the details. What we're going to do is we're going to apply all of the base coats to this, then we're going to wash the whole thing, and then we're going to dry brush it up. I use Vallejo's German Grey to paint the outside of the road wheels, and you can see in this still that I've made a few mistakes, but that's okay. The washes and later steps are going to tidy that up for me quite nicely. After the road wheels have been painted, you're gonna paint the tracks. I use chocolate brown from Vallejo for this. I did this because I felt it was a color that, that worked well, complemented well with the kind of dusty color of the rest of the tank. It was vivid enough um, and distinct enough without bringing that kind of reddish tint that a lot of the, the, the other browns will bring. You can see as well from this still the areas where I'm painting and how I'm painting it. And getting between the road wheels with your brush is going to ruin a nice brush. The state of this brush is pretty horrific, but for the first coat, certainly, I'm going to jab in it in between the road wheels to try and get the maximum coverage. It's going to ruin a brush, so use a brush that's already ruined. Use the paint quite thin, and again, use a couple of coats. I also haven't painted, as you can see here, the space that's going to sit on the table. Nobody's ever going to see it, so don't bother painting it. Once you're happy with the coat on the tracks, I then took uh, metallic. I use GW Lead Belcher, but you can use any kind of silvery metallic. I put a very, very fine dry brush across those tracks. It's just going to give the impression of areas of scratch metal or whatever rather than dirty metal. If you're looking to skip a step, I found in the later stages with the washes and other dry brushes that I applied later that this almost completely disappeared. So you could probably miss it out entirely. The completionist will want to put it in. So we're working on the details on the vehicles now. You can see some of these um, pipes around the exhaust and engine areas. One of the things that I'm experimenting with at the moment is using a really reddish color because of the washes and dry brushes that I apply. It's, a, it's an interesting base coat before applying those effects to give you that really, really over rusted look. It also puts a little bit of color on the model. So in here on these pipes, I've used corn red and at this stage it looks pretty extreme, but towards the later stages of the model I think it works and you'll see as we go through. You can just paint them brown or leave them as they are but I went with this and we'll see how that pans out during the course of the project. So continuing with the details on the model you can see here I've painted the tarps in a green, uh, the jerry can in a German grey and an ammo box in a uh, US olive drab. Take these optional storage items as an opportunity to put some spots of colour on the model and you maybe want to vary them a little bit from army to army. Stick a German jerry can on a British tank or an American ammo box on a German tank just to give it that look that it's been on campaign and they've salvaged bits of equipment from here and there. This is the stuff that the tank crew have added to the tank because they live in it. 
is not necessarily just stuff officially issued at the depot on day one. So now we take our Agra Access shade, our ball talent, and we apply a wash to the entire model. Try not to let it pool too much on the solid surfaces. With the Crusaders, this is a particular problem because they're quite flat on the top. So be mindful of that. You do want that Agra to go in the various cracks that are on the top surface, but you don't want big streaks of brown across the tank. This wash is going to add definition and almost provide an outline to all of the raised surfaces, which is really going to help it stand out on these very small models. Be mindful when you're doing the insides of the road wheels. This is an area in particular where the wash can pull. So you might want to get in there with a dryer, thick brush and just dab it in to soak some of it up. You can also use a wet brush to move some of it around in areas where it's pooling, which will help thin it out and remove it. With that wash dried, you've seen this tank starting to have a more weathered and lived in look, but also a lot of the details are starting to stand out. We want to take our small brush now and start working on some of the really small details. In particular, you want to paint the crew, so I'll start with the faces. Whatever face painting technique you use, stick with that, I would recommend. For me, I use GW's Bugman's Glow, and then I use Cadian Flesh Tone to highlight the noses and the cheeks. Paint the berets black. I leave the rest of the uniform in that dark sand color with the wash. Um, I find that that's enough detail for the tiny amount of the rest of the crewmen that you see. Last few bits of storage we've got to paint and you can see on this um, British Grant, I'm gonna paint the tool handles and I paint those with a, with a reddish brown, a chocolate brown uh, from Vallejo is the one I used because it contrasts with the dirt that we put on the tracks. Paint the tow cables and the shovel heads with the Vallejo grey, uh, German grey, and I also paint any machine guns and other metallic tools um, as a final step. I also painted, there's like a raised edge or chamfered area around the muzzle of the two and the six pounder, and I painted that. I'm not sure how authentic it is, but it helps it stand out from the completely smooth three inch howitzer, which otherwise is indistinguishable on this scale. Paint the metallic areas like we did with the tracks. I used Citadel's lead belcher, but any metallic will do. Paint the shovel head, paint the cable tie ends, and just give a slight highlight to the machine guns. We wash all of those areas with a black wash. I used Citadel's Nuln Oil. I find it works for me, but whatever black wash you use, I'm sure is fine. You may need to thin it down, um, but I use a black wash because it provides a really solid outline. And for some of these tools that are molded in on the model, they need that level of a highlight to separate them from the rest of the vehicle. They can look a little bit blended in otherwise. Very, very final step was to highlight the faces, which I did with Reichland Flesh Shade, but any kind of chestnut or sepia wash is gonna work. It's gonna make them look a little bit tanned if you don't go back and highlight later. But fortunately, these are desert tank crew, so they probably are pretty tanned. We are now gonna apply a final highlight dry brush of our dark sand. You can see the state of the brush that I'm using for this. This needs to be a very, very light uh, dry brush. Otherwise, you're gonna cover up all of the detail and the definition that you just painted. You want to sand it a little bit, but you don't want to do this too much. Be very, very cautious. Start with an area like the top of the turret where I have here, which has no particular detail on it, and work your way around the model. Those are our completed models. It's not beautiful. There's a million more things that you could do to make these, certainly with highlighting. I've really only used the one color, the dark sand for the tank itself, just with washes and highlights, um, and you could do a lot more. But if you paint them in batches, you're gonna apply the wash slightly differently from time to time, um, and it's gonna provide each of them with a slight visual distinctiveness. And as far as I'm concerned, these models are ready for the table. Thank you for watching. If this approach to painting works for you, and you've got a lot of American uh, vehicles from World War II to paint from the mid to late war, why don't you check out our other video in the thing, in the link there, for painting the US armored vehicles. I use a Sherman as an example, but the process works for all of them.
please remember to like, comment, share or subscribe this video. And if you are buying new games or new miniatures, please consider following our affiliate link to Wayland Games. It gives us a little bit of kickback and helps fund other projects for the channel. Thank you for watching.